If you're purchasing a property in 2022, or you wanna watch this video, we've got a brand new search you can do on your property that we've only recently found out. So last week I was speaking to David, who had recently migrated from New Zealand, and we were helping him buy his first home. We're talking about the searches he can do on his property, and one of the questions he had for me was whether or not a meth test was a part of a standard building and pest process. Now this is something we've never heard of before. To do a meth test on a property, we're actually thinking, why is this something that you'd actually do? You see, in New Zealand, it's common practice for meth tests to be completed. Apparently, David was telling me that you actually have to declare if the, the property has high levels of meth because it's a part of the buying process. Now, given this is something we've never heard of before, we thought today would take you through all the things you can do to make sure you do an additional search on the property to give you peace of mind before you go ahead and make your purchase. So Josh, can you run me through what the problems are when purchasing a property that might have had methamphetamines or traces of meth associated with it? The biggest issue when you're buying a property and you have kids, that there are significant health effects that can happen as a result of buying the property. So here are a few. So firstly, the, the neurochemicals that are present and the problem with methamphetamine is that you actually won't be able to smell or see if there's any traces of it in your property. So the biggest issues are that they can have neurochemical changes in your brain. This can change your children's behaviors, motor abilities, and even have bigger issues such as psychotic or psychological uh, with their development. Now, as a parent, Nathan, I, I'm sure that this is something you wouldn't want your sons to be uh, exposed to. Not at all, and this is why when David shared his story of this being very common practice in New Zealand, it's actually something that we've never heard of here in Australia or recommended. So this is brand new in terms of what we know was previously available and a search you could actually do. So it's awesome that you have this ability to do this search especially to protect your family. So we know the health effects. Josh, can you run me through what you need to look out for? So these are the things you're looking out for if you are conducting an inspection. These are things that are really red flags. So you can see here, if you've got batteries, if you've got propane tanks, um, or even if there's... So these are the red flags you wanna look out for. Okay, so if you're in a contract at the moment, we've gotta remember this is a bit of a gray area. So if you've made a contract subject to a 14 day uh, finance clause and a seven day building and pest clause, you're actually not covered for this particular search in being able to pull out of the contract. So this is where you need to consult with your conveyancer or solicitor. From a legal point of view, you need to find out if there's any way you can get out of the contract based on your searches being unsatisfactory. Now, as we've talked about, I'm not sure if this would actually fall under your building and pest clause because it's technically not related to the property um, being satisfactory from a building point of view or an inspection from a termite or a pest point of view. Uh, if you do have a contract that doesn't have a finance clause or building and pest clause and you're unconditionally locked in, then you actually have no way to get out of the contract. Now, in some other circumstances, you might have made a contract without any of these terms and it could be subject to a cooling off period. Now, typically in a cooling off period, you can pull out of the contract for any reason. Once again, this is a bit of a gray area, so we suggest speaking to your solicitor, conveyancer, settlement agent, or whoever's looking after you from your legalities point of view to see what your options are and how you can get out of the contract. As Josh and I just said earlier, this is something fairly new in terms of a search that's available, and we're sure there's gonna be a little bit of teething going through this new search and being able to pull out of the contract based on unfavorable findings that you found. And there's two ways you can test for your property. The first one is you can buy a test online and these tests range from up to $100 where you swab areas in the house to see whether or not meth has been cooking. The second Beautiful. method is a lot of building and pest inspectors are now offering this as a part of their service. Typically, they'll on charge you about $150 to $200 to make this a part of their process. If it were me moving forward from here on in, I would be strongly suggesting that you do this a part of your building and pest inspection process. So one of the things you wanna ask your building and pest inspector is whether or not this is a search that they offer and include with their inspection. So guys, this is something fairly new, highly recommended to think about doing, 
as Josh said, there's two ways to do it. You can either do it yourself or you can actually pay for an additional service through building a pest. So what did you think? Did you actually know that this was an option and you could do this search? Let us know in the comments below. Here at Hunter Galloway, we get home loans approved across Australia. So if you're looking for a mortgage broker, we can help. Call us on 1300 08065 or visit us at huntergalloway.com.au and we'll see you next time.